There are a lot of different crochet hooks out there and the best way to determine which is the best crochet hook for you is really through trial and error. Testing out different types of crochet hooks until you find the one that seems to be the most comfortable for you and the best fit for you to have the best crochet experience. And no one can really tell you what crochet hook you should get. That really should be personal to you and figuring that out on your own by sampling different types of crochet hooks. Now let's start by talking about the anatomy of the crochet hook so you can know the difference between various crochet hooks. This is an image of a very standard generic crochet hook. Let's start at the top. The top of the crochet hook is known as the head of the crochet hook. It will either be smooth or pointed. If it's pointed, that's just an extra assist in inserting the crochet hook into a stitch space more smoothly and can be helpful for a beginner. The next part is the lip of the crochet hook and the groove. The groove would swoop inward and create that claw look of the top of your crochet hook. Then you have the throat of the crochet hook. There are two very defined different types of throats that you can find with a crochet hook. The first is a tapered throat. A tapered throat will be more rounded and much more smooth transition from the groove and even the lip of the crochet hook. The other type of throat is known as an inline throat. The slope is much sharper, it's flat, and has a defined little hook and catch for the yarn where the throat meets the groove there at the head of the crochet hook. So if you struggle with getting your yarn to stay on your crochet hook, maybe it keeps slipping off, try an inline crochet hook. Now we are into the body of the crochet hook. Between the throat and the thumb hold is the shaft of the crochet hook. The shaft of the crochet hook is very helpful in determining or adjusting the different tension size of your stitches. It's where you can take the loop on your crochet hook and glide it across your crochet hook more smoothly to really help you define your tension. Then you have the thumb hold where a lot of people will hold their crochet hook to make their stitches. And at the very end of your crochet hook, that is known as the handle. It's really a balancing act between the handle part and the shaft and head part of the crochet hook. So that is the anatomy of your crochet hook. Now let's determine how it can be different with different types of crochet styles. Swing, baits, boy, furls, any of those sound familiar? <laughs> those are all different name brands of crochet hooks, each one taking the anatomy of a crochet hook and changing it just slightly to try to make your crochet experience much more comfortable and enjoyable. So let's figure out where or how these companies have managed to take the anatomy of a crochet hook and tweak it just enough to be different than the rest. One of the most distinctive differences between crochet hooks that I have seen is whether or not the crochet hook is ergonomic or at the very base of the shaft if the handle has a significant larger section where the yarn has a stopping point at the bottom of the shaft or if the crochet hook is more streamlined in the same shape all the way across the body. Some people really like having a fatter handle for their hand grip to hold onto the crochet hook. And again, that is more known as an ergonomic crochet hook. Other people, they want to have a much thinner streamlined crochet hook. Now, Susan Bates, the Bates brand crochet hook, they do both versions where they have the ergonomic crochet hook handle, which is larger than the shaft of the crochet hook. They also have the streamlined crochet hook, which is all one solid shape, but the thing that Susan Bates has that is defined across both of her hooks is she does the inline crochet hook throat. Boy is all streamlined. They don't have the fatter ergonomic handles. It's all just one solid shape and their crochet hook throats are more tapered, not inline. Then you have the furls or furls odyssey crochet hooks. The furls crochet hooks they're more streamlined slash ergonomic because their throats and their shaft are completely smooth to the handle, yet the handle does expand and get larger to create that much more comfortable hold for somebody who needs a bigger grip. Furls Odyssey also come in both an inline or a tapered throat version, so you can get either one if you would like. The swing is kind of like a mix of all trades. It has the ergonomic handle, has more of a tapered throat, but the whole 
design of the swing is meant to be more comfortable to hold in your hand a more natural curvature to the crochet hook opposed to a straight line. And lastly, I'm going to talk about the clover. And the clover is more of, it has that ergonomic handle, that abrupt edge or handle right after the shaft of the crochet hook, but it has more of a tapered throat to it. So again, depending on what you need, what you're desiring, if you want the throat to be tapered or in line, and if it's important to you to have that bigger handle to hold onto for a more comfortable hold, you may be looking for a more ergonomic crochet hook handle. Now let's talk about the different things that a crochet hook could be made out of. A crochet hook could be made out of aluminum, steel, wood, or plastic. Now this is important to take into consideration because if you want a crochet hook that has a little more weight to it, you may be aiming towards a crochet hook made out of steel or aluminum. If you want a crochet hook that is more lightweight, you're gonna wanna check out a crochet hook made out of wood or plastic. So again, all things to aid you in the comfortability and the crochet experience that you have and the importance of how that crochet hook works for you. Now we've gotten to the part of the video that may be the most familiar to you, and that is identifying the different sizes of crochet hooks that are out there. Now, when it comes to sizes of crochet hooks, we have an alphabetical scale, we have a number, and we also have a millimeter dimensional size that can help us determine which size our crochet hook is. And depending on where we are in the world, our crochet hook will be labeled differently or as such. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a chart here on the screen to help guide me because there are so many different sizes of crochet hooks on there. You may notice that there is no letter A on this list. What I would identify the letter A crochet hooks to be are all the really super thin, itty bitty, more thread or string crochet hook sizes, which are super small. They're super thin. So those I would put down in the letter A category. But then as you go B, C, D, E, the further down the alphabetical scale, the larger the crochet hook becomes. And it's really cool. Love seeing that aspect. But also note that your crochet hook may say it's a letter H, or it may say this is just a number eight, or even more common is the crochet hook will be labeled just a 5.00 millimeter crochet hook. So having this kind of chart to help you identify what that means in association can really help guide you to which project it can help you work with best. Other crochet hooks that you might just be intrigued to find, to see, to play with would include the light up crochet hook, which has a light at the head of the crochet hook, which can help you if you're crocheting in the dark, or if you just need a little extra guided light to help you see your stitches. Maybe you're working with a black yarn or a really dark yarn, and the light at the end of the head of the crochet hook can help you see your stitches a little better. That's a really fun option. There's also a crochet hook called a nook, or a nook style of crocheting, which is more knitting, but with a crochet hook. It's really cool, very different, and if you wanna play with it, there is something called a nook style crochet hook. There's also the Tunisian crochet hook, which is also a knit style or different style of crochet if you would like to give it a try. It is a very long crochet hook, which helps you to work backwards in your work. It's a really neat concept. There's different types of ergonomic crochet hooks. So if you want just one with a rubber grip, or if you want more of a rounded handle, check out all of the different ways there are ergonomic help samples, just styles that you can play with to help you with the grip of your crochet hook. And then there's the broomstick crochet hook, which is a completely different, very fun stitch concept that involves a large one inch thick stick that you can make your crochet stitches around and it creates something really cool, really beautiful. So if you see these and you're like, I don't know what that is or how I would use it, I just wanna to bring to light that those are options that you can play with if you would like to in the future. All right, let's wrap up this video by going over what crochet hook I would recommend to the absolute beginner getting started with crochet. And that would be a streamlined crochet hook, either boy or Bates. 
and I would recommend it be in the size H8 or five millimeter crochet hook or I9 5.5 millimeter crochet hook because those sizes will be the best used for a medium sized yarn and will be the most common crochet hook size for a lot of your beginner projects. So if you had to come up with just two crochet hooks to begin with, make sure you have those in your arsenal to grab a hold of because you're gonna be using those a lot. <laughs> also, I say the streamline because I want you to be able to understand the stitches, know what you're doing first, and then go for comfort. And the best way for you to decide which crochet hook works best for you and is most comfortable for you is to just play and experiment with different types of crochet hooks until you can find the one that is the most comfortable and creates the best experience for you. And everybody's different. So, all right, thank you so much for watching this crochet hook video. If you had any questions, feel free to comment in the comment section below with your questions. If I missed something, please mention whatever I missed in the comment section below so that way we can still reference what I may have missed through your additional information. That would be great. After this video, definitely check out my second video in the series, which is all things yarn and what you may or may not know about it <laughs> and things that you definitely want to know when you're getting started with crochet. Thank you so much for watching this video. I had so much fun just hanging out with you and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye guys.